All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Felix. Uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about, you know, getting started with your ledger. You know, I hope you guys had a really good um, holiday season and you guys might have uh, you know, purchased a, one of the new, one of the devices like a Ledger Nano X or a Ledger Nano S Plus. You might have gotten it um, as a present. And so what I was hoping to do was just to go through um, some of the things that uh, you guys might encounter. Um, SBI, I hope uh, you should be able to hear me now. I did uh, realize that uh, um, when I first came online. But yeah, you might have got one of our devices uh, and you maybe you wanted to know how to get started. Um, I wanted to go through just some of the more general things that we might uh, normally come across. Um, I'll uh, go through maybe some common things about uh, which network you withdraw on. Uh, if you, if there might be, if there's time, I might even go into some details about uh, bridging in particular um, and go from there. So first things first, uh, yeah, you might, uh, if you've got your device, the first thing you'd want to do uh, would be to download and launch Ledger Live. Um, I'm going, to, I should already have uh, Ledger Live installed. I'll just show you where you might want to download that first of all. First thing would be to make sure to go to ledger.com. Uh, please watch out for any um, fraudulent websites because it does happen um, if they do, if someone tries to buy a bad space or something like that. Um, our brand protection team is working all the time to try and um, stop these guys from being able to do things like that. Uh, but uh, just make sure you're using the right uh, ledger.com is going to be the domain where everything should come from. And you should be able to see under apps and services right there. Um, it'll be under Ledger Live. So whether you're using uh, uh, Windows, uh, generally speaking, you should be up to date on Windows 10. Um, and uh, you should be able to use OSX as well, as well as Linux. Um, and you'll be able to use your um, mobile device if you want to as well for certain things. With that being said though, um, let's say you, you're on your computer, I'm using a Windows and I've installed Ledger Live. You should be able to see something like this. And there's actually a very specific uh, um, guide. There's a very in-depth guide rather that will be able to show you how to go through that process. So you'll be able to see here, um, it'll, if I go through and um, uh, advise that I've been, um, I'm setting up my Legend Nano S Plus, which you can see on the bottom right. I'm setting that up for the first time. That uh, it'll actually go through a bunch of uh, uh, steps or rather things that I might need to know about my recovery phrase being, and that being the specific uh, backup uh, to all of your, to all of your assets, right? Or in, in actuality, it's the, it's the thing that gives you access. That relationship between your public and private key pair is how you can sign transactions for any, a, an address that you might have. If it, it's all kind of confusing to you or anything like that, we actually do have really good uh, Academy articles. Um, this one here is the one that I, I use a lot. It's about a mask, um, but if I go just to the Ledger Academy um, in particular, you'll be able to see there's going to be articles about how to keep safe, um, what a blockchain is, everything like that. So it's a really big and good resource that you might need if uh, you're just getting started and you want to know more about crypto in general. But let's say, but being that you know, I already have mine set up, as you can see on the bottom right, um, let's go back and let's... Uh, just get make, see if we can get straight to straight set up. If you've ever you know reset your Ledger device and you or reset your instance of Ledger Live, you might have had to use uh, this option to connect your Ledger, Ledger Nano S Plus once it's already set up, for example. But let's get that now. This genuine check is actually going to check the hardware and software integrity of the device just to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with. Um, just a couple of things about. Uh, um, any questions that you might have, if you uh, pop them into the comments, uh, I've got a colleague that should be able to have a chat with you as well. I'm just going to allow this manager here um, and we should be able to go from there. But let's see, it's all, thankfully, it's uh, it's all, uh, all good to go from there. 
All right, and then we should be able to get in. I'll show you how to add accounts and things like that and what an account might mean and, you know, each individual network or blockchain can kind of have different um, properties and how they might uh, appear to a user in particular. So it's important to know, depending on what uh, specific uh, um, what, what specific asset that you're using, it might have a different uh, proper, like it might be a UTXO type of uh, 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 asset, uh, like a Bitcoin, for example. It could be something like uh, Ethereum where you might use a single account, but we'll get to that in a second. So. I've just launched Ledger Live. I've just launched Ledger Live, okay. And uh, I need to add an account. Um, an account would allow you to see the uh, see the addresses potentially, um, whether that's a singular or multiple uh, that you're able to manage with the recovery phrase that you have set up on the device. Remember, you know, and we always rant about this a lot, please never put your recovery phrase anywhere that's not your ledger device. You'll want to put it onto you know, the piece of paper uh, that you might receive or the piece of card that you might receive with, your, um, with the device itself. But please uh, don't, like if Ledger Live, if a fraudulent version of Ledger Live asks you to input your recovery phrase, don't do it. Um, potentially you, down, you could have potentially downloaded it from a, uh, a malicious website, there might have been some malware, get a hold of us. You can get a hold of us at support.ledger.com. We'll try to answer you as soon as we can to try and potentially figure out what could have happened with regard to that. But in this case, let's say I want to add an Ethereum account. Let's uh, go from there. So I select Ethereum, boom. You can see here that they've got the snow in the background for Christmas. I hope, uh, uh, again, everyone had a, had a nice, um, holiday season um, hopefully you got some new, new crypto assets or something like that so it's asking me to open the ethereum account now in some circumstances if i've already um if i've already installed the application it'll ask me to open it but if i haven't done that already it might ask me to or it might automatically try to install just something to keep in mind it's pretty normal so i'm going to click both buttons to open that uh, application with applications, one thing to mention is that it's not just uninstalling the application isn't going to necessarily um, isn't going to have you lose access to those funds. I always think about the application when something is going to rise. So you may be able to see the troubleshooting that I'll be able to do. Let's just jump out. I'm going to pop it back in just to make sure we're all set up correctly. And this is my test device that I always use. Um, so please don't use this pin code. Um, it's not very secure, is it? All right, um, but the application itself. The application is essentially a way for the Ledger device to make sure it understands which network and how to communicate with the blockchain that you're interacting with. So if I need to sign a transaction uh, on Ethereum, for example, it, I open the Ethereum application and it knows how to sign that application and things like that. But because the assets are actually on chain, right? They're on uh, the blockchain, it's, the ledger device holds the recovery phrase in particular. So let's say you have a ledger nano S, you know, you, you purchased it a while ago and uh, it's, uh, it doesn't have maybe enough space for all the, all the assets that you wanna manage. It's okay to uninstall and reinstall those applications uh, because it's uh, it doesn't hold any personal data in particular. Your accounts are still going to remain in your instance of Ledger Live, and you can continue to manage the assets. When you want to manage something, you can go about and uh, uh, install the application that you need to. All right. Just while this is loading, I might uh, well, let's go through see if there's any uh, applications, uh, uh, any not applications. If there's any. Um, uh, questions in the chat, uh, uh, boom, let's go backwards, why Ledger uh, stop working Windows 8. Um, specifically in terms of support for Windows, we don't want to support uh, operating systems that uh, have, let's for example, the, that Windows potentially would uh, stop supporting. Um, it's 
basically, mainly it's because of security issues. We want to make sure that everything's as secure as possible, right? Um, so that would be my understanding, um, not being a dev myself, uh, not uh, working on that in particular. I'm just going to restart this just to make sure we're all good. But um, that would be my understanding of why. Um, it's not something we generally recommend, but if you did really want to do so, you can actually uh, use an older version of Ledger Live if you needed to, just to you know manage assets as you need to before you update your version of Windows up to you know, Windows 10 or the latest version. Um, we I run Windows 10 here. I run uh, 11 on my personal device. Just make sure you're running all of the later device um, later. Uh, operating systems and you'll be uh, good to go from there and that's what I would generally suggest we don't generally suggest using older versions of uh, uh, of Windows in particular um, Stephanos asks uh, is there a way to use Ledger Nano to protect an already induced MetaMask wallet with Ethereum and NFTs already in it without transferring everything to a Ledger created address um, we also don't generally recommend this um, where you can, I'm just going to check about applications. We don't generally recommend this as well, Stephanos, but you can actually install, um, so you can actually input your recovery phrase um, into the ledger device from the MetaMask one. We don't recommend it because it could be a vector by which uh, attackers could gain access to the funds. So we actually don't recommend it, but it's possible. Otherwise, you can. it's better, generally speaking, to actually uh, transfer those assets on chain to a device, uh, to a recover um, addresses derived from a recovery phrase that was created by the ledger. That way, you know that it's been created with uh, a good source of randomness. Um, you know it's remained offline the whole time, as opposed to um, you know being on a computer that you know could have been compromised. So that's generally uh, what we recommend. Um, it's possible, like I mentioned, to do to in input that. Personally, I wouldn't do it at all. I have a test device that I do it on, just for hot wallets and stuff like that, but it's got like five cents in it. Um, if you really have a lot of uh, assets to secure, this is, I mean, this is why you bought the Ledger device, right? To remain secure. So I would generally recommend to transfer all of those assets in particular. I know it's not the best solution, but that's what I, that's what uh, is generally what we recommend. All right. Uh, just wanted to make sure everything was up to date, but let's add an account and we'll go from there. Um, like I was before, I'll again, need to open the application. Um, what essentially Ledger Live is doing is it's going about and it's gonna grab uh, the address uh, that I'm able to access and go from there. But once we go through the receive process, for example, uh, we'd be able to actually go about, um, get the address that I need to add uh, I need to add into a place like uh, uh, Binance, for example. So for myself, let's say I'm just going to go to a random address just to give you guys an idea. Um, let's say this is my address or something, a bit of a fancy address here. Um, but if I wanted to withdraw from Binance, for example, I would uh, take this address or I'd take it from Ledger Live in particular. Um, I'm probably going to do some troubleshooting. I'll do that in a second. Um, but I'd take it from Ledger Live. I would uh, um, go back into Binance. I'd input that normally, if I remember correctly, with Binance, for example, you might need to whitelist the address. I think it's the same with crypto.com. Um, and then you'll be able to withdraw to that address. Um, there are a lot of good help center articles. Um, even myself, what I do is I actually go to, uh, I actually just Google it, honestly. So I just go. Ledger support, let's say uh, crypto.com. This is even what I do day to day. Um, if I need some refresh, uh, refreshing on something in particular, uh, withdraw, let's say. Because right, I know one of my colleagues who's actually in the chat right now um, would have written a lot of these articles as well. So give me a bit of a shout out here. Uh, but you can see here how to withdraw these steps are quite in depth. You know, um, as to how to, you know, input your address, make sure you're in the correct network. You can see on number 10 here. And that's another thing that I wanted to touch on in particular, just uh, before maybe I have a look at the other questions as well. In that, network, 
especially with a lot of EVM, so EVM being Ethereum virtual machine or EVM compatible uh, networks, that might be Ethereum, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, you've got uh, Avalanche, Avalanche C Chain um, in particular. And they all have these addresses that start with 0x and they're going to be valid for all, all of those. Um, let's say I go to Polygon Scan, for example. So that's a block explorer. So it's a way I can look at what's happening on a blockchain uh, for a particular network. And if I go here, you can see uh, that it's a valid address because I come up with a, with a page, but it's different, right? Um, that's because they're different networks, uh, or essentially they, you can't just send one to the other, even though the addresses are the same. So I think speaking to a lot of customers, this could be something that's a little bit confusing. So it's important to know which network. So if you're withdrawing from Binance, for example, it's really common, <coughs> excuse me, it's really common uh, for them to suggest that you withdraw on Binance Smart Chain. So for example, if I go to BSC Scan, which is the block explorer for BNB Smart Chain in particular. I think they just changed that recently. If I've withdrawn on Ethereum, and uh, then I will not see anything here on BNB Smart Chain. And the same is a vice versa. So if I withdraw on Binance Smart Chain or BNB Smart Chain, as uh, uh, Binance might normally suggest uh, a lot of the time, I definitely won't see it on the Ethereum mainnet. Right? I won't see it here. So please, please, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the funds are going to be lost, but you know, finance can be really stressful. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind. Um, I think I, I definitely have mentioned it before. Uh, so it's definitely something that, you know, you might want to have a look at. Just double check, it might be Optimism, Arbitrum. I use those a lot personally. Um, these uh, potential solutions, if you, especially if you don't want to pay a lot of gas fees, you're going to most likely need the native token um, of that network to pay for transaction fees. Um, so I'll get into that now, actually. So let's say I've withdrawn onto Ethereum. Um, let's say I want to send an ERC20 token. Again, this is just a random address. I want to send an ERC20 token. These are just spam tokens. But if I wanted to send something, I would need Ethereum to pay for those transaction fees. Um, on BNB Smart Chain, I would need BNB. On, Matic, on Polygon, I would need Matic uh, to send uh, those fees. So it's really, uh, especially if you're just getting into crypto, it's a lot, there's a lot of uh, really these small things that might you might hit as road bumps. And I hope that you know me talking about it will be able to um, help you guys in terms of being able to figure your way around it so that you guys can really own the assets uh, that you use, uh, that you manage, if you want to send, if you want to receive, if you're managing it as a business, uh, what might be best for you in particular. It's really good. It's really important to you know understand what you might need it for and then you can decide what a specific network or what specific blockchain is going to be best for you. Let's see if there's a couple of questions here. Um, will there be a release for Ledger Live iPad? Um, if I understand correctly, it's not something that we have. I, I'm sure you guys, you know, Camille, Camille, it's not something we have at the moment. I think it's something that they're thinking about, although I don't know if, they, like, I don't have it in a specific time frame for you, unfortunately, um, or anything like that. Um, I hate to be the bearer of of uh, bad news uh, with regards to that. I might scroll up, there's a couple of questions I think have been answered already. Um, in particular, let's go, all right. Okay, so I think the other thing that I wanted to talk about, because I've been talking about networks and, uh, um, and if I withdrawn on a different network and things like that, about what we might be, what we can do to try and make our lives easier. So if I accidentally withdrawn uh, onto BNB structure and I actually wanted to have it on Polygon, what could I do? One of the things that we can do is we could withdraw back to our um, 
uh, withdraw back to our, uh, what is it called, um, uh, centralized exchange. So whether that's crypto.com, whether that's Binance or um, anything like that, Coinbase, um, we can withdraw it back onto there. And then we can just make sure we, as long as that exchange supports it, we can withdraw it onto the right network. So you know, in this example, it would be Polygon. But for, the, the, for those of you that do know that there is actually something else that uh, we could potentially do, and they're called bridges. Now, you might have heard of, uh, of bridges. They're, they're in media a lot because uh, there's, previously there's been hacks of, uh, of them before. But I'll go into that in a second because it really depends on it. The crux of it is uh, how it works. Um, essentially, you've got these two networks and they're not connected with each other. Um, and these bridges essentially are able to communicate between these two networks and say, hey, I'm going to send, uh, let's say you see optimism here, but instead of optimism, let's say my example was I withdrew on BNB uh, smart chain, so you've got that here. Now it's going to pop up with my MetaMask because uh, that's what I have open as the default extension at the moment. We do a lot of uh, uh, random things with MetaMasks, MetaMasks uh, features as well. Um, and then on the second one, I'm going to select, uh, where is it here? I'm going to for that one. I'm going to need to select uh, Polygon, which will be, let's put them that here, right here. So once I've done that, I need to select what token. It might be Ethereum, um, it might be Matic, uh, it might be USDT, USDC, whatever it might be. Um, those are the really common ones that you might send between networks. And then you're going to have to sign a transaction. You see here it's just at, uh, asking me to add that chain specifically. I'm going to switch over. Boom. Wait for that to load, especially because I'm uh, uh, streaming now. It's going to feel a little sluggish compared to normal. Um, but we'll pop that in there and I'll pop Polygon in there and I can select, you know, I want to send a USDC over and then I can uh, mess around with it as best I can as, uh, uh, in, in the way that I see fit rather. Uh, you can go Kronos here if you're withdrawing from crypto.com. That's a really common one to take into account. KCC is the, uh, is the network for KuCoin, if I remember correctly. Um, is, and then you've got like Avalanche and OKC, OKC as well and things like that. So you can see, we can. Well, I'm not. We're not affiliated with uh, any swap or multi-chain or anything like that. So there are multiple of these services that you can use to actually, you know, bridge between them. Now, bear in mind, I think it's really important to make sure that you trust these services. Um, you know the transactions, so you see the transactions that you're signing. You understand that, you know, it might be it, if you are on some. If there are very common, it is very common, let me say this, that I might go to a website that says uh, any swap dot exchange and instead of uh, uh, the C here, it will be some other letter, for example. And it's trying to act uh, like this one, it's going to replicate it pretty much exactly. And it's trying to get you to sign a transaction that compromises your security, right? So it's really important to make sure you know which domain you're working with smart contracts you're working with, um, just to always be sure. One thing I might suggest is uh, you might always have like a second account that you sign these transactions with just to make sure that you guys are um, always safe in that regard. So you're not like with your main account, let's say you've got like 10, 10K or something crazy like that, and then you're gonna um, you know, sign a transaction that gives um, a, a decentralized exchange or a bridge full access, um, the approve, uh, the dreaded approval, uh, approve uh, uh, pattern. Uh, so it's just, it's definitely something I wanted to mention as a, a really, really cool tool um, that bridges can do, uh, bridges are, to be able to help you manage your assets across all of these chains. Because chains. So there's, a, there's this whole universe of different little networks out there that might all have different benefits and disadvantages. So it's something that um, might bear, might be worth looking into and experimenting with. You can see some of the uh, 
prerequisites that you might need in terms of when you're managing these assets. Now, um, I can see here, Hal Ubik mentions Cardano staking in Ledger Live. Um, I don't, we don't have any specifics with regards to that, but my understanding is that you definitely should be able to use, as I'm sure you might be aware, uh, using uh, third-party applications. And as you saw, we've got um, MetaMask, but you can see here, I've even got Tallyho, which is another, um, which is another uh, extension wallet. Uh, and, the, and for Cardano, there are things like Yoroi, Nami, uh, that you can use to manage your assets on the Cardano chain as well. Yeah, I think my colleagues mentioned that in particular. So that's, I, I know it's a lot to take in, especially if you're completely new. There's bridges, there's like decentralized exchanges and things like that. But let's talk about that actually, um, decentralized exchanges, because if you've just withdrawn from an exchange, you know, after this year has been completely wild, I'm sure you guys are aware, especially with FTX and, you know, you, you don't, we don't trust uh, the centralized entities as much as we used to. We, they might be doing their best in terms of um, providing proof of funds, proof of assets, proof of liabilities and things like that. But it's important for us, uh, I think it's important personally, in my opinion, to make sure that uh, we continue to use these decentralized ex uh, decentralized services. So it's not just uh, in uh, exchanges, but other kinds of services, because our, the, the self-custody of our own assets is something that I personally believe in. I think it's uh, uh, something a lot of us here, most of us should believe in here uh, at Ledger. But one of the big ones, if you're not already aware, would be some like Uniswap, SushiSwap, OneInch, uh, Paraswap, uh, these, and these are uh, services that you can use to actually exchange the assets. Now, you're not going to be able to necessarily change into your traditional bank account. So if you bank with, um, I don't know, uh, HSBC, if you bank with, uh, uh, what's, uh, for me, I'm Australian, so ANZ, ANZ uh, Commonwealth Bank, uh, other things, then it might, it, it's a, it, you won't be able to necessarily just go and be like, oh, I want to deposit into my bank account, but you can sell, you can buy and sell kinds of tokens on these networks you can see here um, and go from there. I just pause here. I can see Adrian has a question. Can you add to Ledger Live the option to have push notifications for the wallets monitored in the app? It's a better place, peace of mind to know if something happens to your funds without opening the app. Uh, oh, looks like my... Um, Colleagues already answered that, and yes, we always take uh, new suggestions in. We try to write them all down, and we try to really, um, we try to really, uh, what's the word, uh, convey the importance of the of this uh, to our developers. Um, it's it'd be really cool, especially like you know, you've received an asset from a friend or something like that. Hundred percent. But in this case, like I mentioned, it's not something that we have, but we'll try to convey that, uh, that importance and urgency. So you can see here, it's, I've just added myself on Ethereum. You see I have an ES domain. I might get into that if we've got some time, um, but I can make this swap. Let's say I've got some Ethereum, you can see, and I'm done. And I wanna get out of Ethereum. I think it's gonna be dropping a lot lower, for example, and uh, I wanna switch, so. I can go max, I'm going to swap all of my Ethereum out and I want to swap it to DAI, which is a uh, uh, another token by Maker, um, shout out to them, I love their work. Um, and yeah, I can swap all of my Ethereum for 27 DAI, so it's about 27 uh, US dollars. And I can make the swap now, it'll ask me to uh, confirm the swap. now. I think I was mentioning before about the approval process. Um, because I've used this before, I've already got those approvals in place, but I must, might ask you to sign a transaction to, uh, uh, it might ask you to sign a transaction to say, hey, you need to approve this, but let's give it a try now. So I'm just gonna confirm the swap. Now what's gonna happen, Minimask is gonna open because I'm not using Ledger Live via Wallet Connect or something like that in this case, uh, but yeah. Let's, uh, so you guys can see how this might work. I think there were some questions about uh, using MetaMask with your Ledger device. 
And yeah, I, I use MetaMask a lot as well because I like to mess around with the nonsense and things like that. I like to um, do a bunch of random stuff. So it's, it's good to get to know all of the, uh, all of the players in the space. Um, so you can see here, it's gonna ask me to interact with the contract. Looks pretty scary, doesn't it? But nothing to worry about. You can actually check here. It's a link here, and we can actually check this contract. Um, you can see here how much uh, I might need to spend in terms of gas fees. It might be tempting to edit this to be the minimum. Um, but what might happen there is that your transaction would potentially get stuck um, because what happens is that transactions require. Um, you to pay for them. Uh, the, the, the miners or the validators in this case require some kind of incentive to include your transaction in a block. So please don't, don't, be, uh, don't try to set the absolute minimum. It'll be like zero, zero. Um, you, you can if you want, obviously, uh, but what might happen is it'll get stuck. No one wants to include it in the next block and then um, it might be stuck there. Then we might have to do something I can show you. Um, there are what you might need to do to change that. But let's say I wanted to do this. Let's confirm this. Let's say. Um, all right, we're making the swap. What essentially is going to happen now, MetaMask or whatever wallet that you use is going to ask the ledger device to sign a transaction. Um, okay, cool. Um, I'll, go to, I'll go into what this means in a second. But uh, it's essentially because my recovery phrase is on the ledger device, um, and the, let the recovery phrase derives uh, the uh, public-private key pair to be able to sign a specific transaction. Essentially, it'll go, MetaMask will go, hey, ledger device, can you please sign this transaction? Um, the ledger device is gonna see, see this transaction, so okay, I'm gonna look at the ledger device, I'm gonna be like, hey, um, these are all the parameters that I have, like this is the co smart contract that I'm interacting with, this is what I want to swap from. This is what I want to swap to, for example. Um, this might be the slippage that I selected, everything like that. And then after that, um, once I sign it and approve it, the ledger device then sends this completely signed transaction all the way back to MetaMask. That means that the recovery phrase is always offline. This is why the, this is part of the reason why the ledger, how the ledger keeps you secure. Now, what's happened in this case in particular is that the Ledger account does not belong to the connected device. Um, it's a bit of a different wording than what we have in Ledger Live, but what it's specifically saying is that the, reco the recovery phrase that I've set this device up with um, is not the same as this address that I have here. Now, what, is that, what does that mean? So I've got, let's say, look, this, is, this is the device that I have here that is actually with this address. Because the recovery phrase is different, uh, just because I have this device, just because I connect it with my instance of Ledger Live, uh, doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean that I can just manage the same addresses. Right? Um, each recovery phrase manages its determined set of addresses. So, in this case, the reason that it's coming up with this because the it's not the right device uh, that I'm using, or more specifically, it's not the right private key and therefore it's not the right recovery phrase that's on the device. So if I plug in my real, uh, my personal device that I use all the time, I once I make this swap, it'll actually ask me to sign it on my device itself. So this is something that you might, uh, this is an area that you might come across if you, you know, own multiple uh, recovery phrases, if you own uh, multiple devices and things like that. It might be something that you might, um, uh, might, that might happen to you. So you can swap. Uh, remember, there's other, there's other, um, what is it called? Uh, competitors or other players in the space. There's Sushi Swap, um, uh, Pancake Swap, and they might have their own. Uh, what's the word? Uh, target target markets uh, for specific networks, for specific blockchains, um, and things like that. It's really, it's a, it's a lot to take in, I know, um, if you, when you're looking through all of this. Um, so make sure you guys stay safe. If you guys, if anyone DMs you asking for your recovery phrase, it's a, it's a thing that's uh, really common right now. It has been for a long time, I'm sure. Is to never, never 
put your recovery queries in anywhere that's not your ledger device. So I think that is the most important part so that it remains offline. Um, all right, uh, so yes, pancake swap, uh, my personal favorite uh, that I'm trying to use more of uh, would be cow swap. Um, but uh, you know, you don't have to use um, any of the suggested ones here. It's just uh, ones that I think personally are really cool based on the technology and things like that. See if there's any other questions. Um, please, guys, keep keep coming with the questions in the chat. Um, we'd love to talk to you guys in particular and go from there. Um, right, see if there's anything up above. Um, Looks like my colleagues answered most of these questions, but yeah. other than uh, swaps and bridges, um, making sure you're withdrawn on the, the right network. Um, I think one thing I might talk about would be um, when you are, you might have, be getting, if you've you know, been interacting with your ledger device or uh, your uh, cryptocurrency address for a while now, especially on EVM networks, is that you might be getting these uh, transactions that you never asked for, like it could be for anything for USDC, it could be for, uh, it might be being airdropped, uh, these random NFTs that you never asked for, uh, you might be given these, uh, um, you might be seeing things that are sent, but you things that you never purchased, right? And I really, I wanted to talk about that in particular because uh, I think we just got a new uh, Help Sender article about that in particular and it's all part of an ecosystem, um, uh, ecosystem of uh, what do you, um, attacks called uh, address poisoning. Um, not art because that's more on the traditional side of pen testing, uh, obviously they're just a bit what it is essentially you've got ledger live open and uh there we go you've got ledger live open and you maybe let's say you are really stuck for time and you just go into your um you go into your settings and you just go hey i want to uh, grab the last address you just copy and paste it from the last transaction and this is essentially what uh, attackers are trying to get you to do um essentially you can see here you've received uh, a transaction for nearly for a really small amount. It might look really similar. Similar. There are tools you can see here, uh, like Profanity, uh, which isn't secure. Please don't use it. But that, uh, but that, what happens is that they try to get you to use that address and just send funds there, because transactions on chain aren't reversible. Um, it's it's a real. It, it can you know you can lose funds because of this. So this new kind of attack, if you want to find out more, again, come to our help center. But these kinds of attacks really point to the importance of making sure that you always go through the receive process. The receive process makes sure that you are verifying the address um, that you can manage with your ledger device. Another thing as well is that if you see, if you see here, if you get a different address. Now you can, if you're really, if you're really specifically, uh, if you really want to be really um, meticulous, you can check every letter. Um, I did that for the first couple of times and I do that now. And um, if I'm sending rather large transactions, but a lot of times you might not want to do all of that. You can check, you know, the first five, last five, please check as many as you can, just to make sure that uh, it is the exact same address. It's a, it's a bit of a risk, uh, risk reward thing, right? If you don't have time, you, you need to check as many as you can. But it really points out to the importance of doing so when you're receiving crypto, when you're sending as well, just to check where you're sending to, you will also match the addresses as well. Every single character needs to be addressed. And you see here, it says not just the first four um, because those can be replicated, right? It's always best to uh, check as many as you can. 
um, because you don't, someone could be targeting you. If you're sending, you know, if you're sort of like, uh, I don't know, some crypto billionaire and you're sending like a hundred million at a time, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to be checking as, many, as much as I can. Uh, so this is something that's been coming up recently that I really wanted to address because it is, if you're used to um, traditional finance or if you don't know what this is, it could look really scary. It's like, I didn't, I didn't either ask for this NFT, I didn't send this NFT, this NFT I didn't, uh, never wanted in the first place. Did someone gain access? And you can see um, your, there's one thing to note, your addresses are all public on the blockchain. Or your transactions are generally public on the blockchain, especially if you're on like a Ethereum mainnet, if you're on BNB smart chain and things like that. So these things can happen. What we normally suggest, never return them. Don't, <clears throat> don't touch the NFTs, if they're NFTs, don't touch them. Don't try to send them away, don't, whatever. Don't burn them, whatever it is. Always, always just, um, you can hide them in Ledger Live actually, but just pretend they're not there if you see them otherwise, other, other places. Looks like there's a couple of more questions coming in. I might not try to ask, answer these in particular. Um, Nit Nitrix uh, mentions, hey, how do I transfer crypto via Tron Network to Ledger? Um, looking to be able to transfer any crypto BTC F currently stored in exchange USDC to. I don't know if uh, off the top of my head I don't know if Tron has a has a uh, wrapped Bitcoin alternative, but I know that they do definitely have a um, USDT um, uh, alternative in particular, uh, like a uh, a version of USDT on the Tron network, so it. Uh, might be important to just double check that, but if you're looking to transfer like something like that, for example, you should be able to add your net, uh, add the network, uh, add the app, so the Tron app, under uh, let's open my let's open my ledger live, um, under my ledger, which is on the bottom left hand side. Generally speaking, you go there, install the application, create an account, and then you'll be able to receive those assets uh, for what might be supported um, in particular. Um, that's generally the process. Um, it's just important to make sure to know what's supported on the exchange and what's supported uh, if you only want to use Ledger Live, what's supported in Ledger Live, or whatever um, kind of third party service or wallet you're using. Um, hopefully, that answers most of it. I uh, didn't want to get too stuck in the weeds because I'm really, I could rant about this all day. The Adrian asks uh, a theoretical question. If you receive a ledger with the keys preset from chain, from chain attack, uh, it might be a supply chain if you mentioned. <clears throat> How safe is it to reset the device with three wrong pins? Can the device be tampered with on the software side? This is a relatively common question, and I think I mentioned it before. Um, in particular, what happens when you set up the device, and um, not just when you set up the device, and what happens in general, is that the ledger live will perform what's called a genuine check which essentially asks, uh, looks at the ledger hardware integrity and the software integrity to make sure they're safe. So it, it is actually what we generally suggest. And it is safe to reset the device with three pins and then remembering to, I mean, you might, let's say if someone did, you know, set it up, they gave you a pin, they gave you, even may, might have given you the recovery phrase too. Just don't use it. Don't deposit any funds, don't try to do anything fancy, just uh, reset it, that'll be perfectly fine. You can get your own recovery phrase. It'll be generated with a good set of randomness from the device itself, and you'll be able to manage your assets from there. So perfectly safe, that's what I would, uh, uh, that's what I would um, generally suggest um, in particular. Kara mentions, what is the number of confirmations in account settings and what is the importance of this value for one or 10 or more? Number of confirmations were, would be the number of uh, confirmations that you would want uh, on chain to happen before it appears as being confirmed on your, uh, in your instance of Ledger Live. I might just come here, this is just a, random account that I had up before. And you see here the number of block confirmations. 
Um, if you only want one confirmation, so that's really quick, then you can set that as one. Um, you could put 10, you can put 100. Uh, generally, it changes from network to network about uh, what kind of, uh, uh, what level of uh, confirmation you want for each chain. Um, I think it's important that if you, yeah, the more secure you want to be or the more sure you want to be that it has been confirmed and it's all good, you can set it to higher, to higher. but it'll take, it might be a little bit slower for it to uh, look as being confirmed within the instance of Ledger Live. It's generally a, uh, a personal preference thing um, and I, I generally like to wait a, a little while, quite a bit, um, but generally it's up to you. Uh, Bleep in the serial. I don't know. I want to mention that. Uh, it's a, it's fine. Uh, when will we get UTXO labeling and management in Ledger Live? That is something that I'll mention uh, um, accordingly because that's that would be a really great uh, tool for us. Um, so yeah, thanks for the suggestion. I'll definitely mention that ahead, um, going forward to our devs. Nitrix. Um, I can simply find the Tron app on my Ledger app via phone. Hmm. Uh, Gen my general uh, um, spy sense would be making sure everything's up to date. So your version of Ledger Live, uh, your Ledger device firmware, things like that. Um, thinking about how you're connecting to your device. Um, I, c I can only be quite general here. I'd love to be able to you know, see a screenshot of maybe what you're seeing in particular, what device you're using and things like that. Uh, but those are the first things that come to mind, uh, just based on what you mentioned to me there. Uh, Jonathan mentions I would love to see uh, more token support in Ledger Live, so I don't have to use external ones like VChain, for example. Yeah, to um, VChain in particular, I, uh, yes, um, understood. Yeah, I'll make sure to pass that on. It's it's really tough for I think the developers are always under a lot of pressure to add a lot of these uh, tokens and new um, networks to our ecosystem, as you might know. There are a lot. Um, so yes, we will, I know the devs are working really hard. I'm just trying to make sure they add in as much as they can, as many as they can, as quickly as they can. Um, but noted, and I will make sure to uh, pass that on. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, yep. So my colleague answered about the node in particular, that SAT stack uh, that you would use. Um, Ledger, when is uh, so Silver Frogman? When is Ledger Stacks gonna have a color screen? I don't know that because the, the Ledger Stack screen, if you guys don't know, the newest uh, uh, just announced is only black and white. I don't know that they have plans to make the Ledger Stacks with a color screen in particular. Um, I don't know what plans they have in the future for any color screen or anything like that. Um, but you know, in my playing around with it. Um, I was surprised at the fidelity of a uh, uh, black and white screen because I'd never owned a Kindle before. So I didn't know how bright it would be if I could use it in low light settings because I do everything if you can't tell in dark mode. So uh, this, I don't, I found that it wasn't as necessary as I thought it, it would need to be. Um, it is a lot nicer to see everything in color. I totally understand that, uh, but you, I really would, uh, if you guys ever get the chance to um, have one of your friends play around with it, it is really, or to have a look at it, it looks kind of like CGI-ish here, but it is as bright as this, it looks really good. Um, I was honestly like, I was super stoked to be able to play around with it in hand. Um, uh, I can see Jan Gauvert and uh, Nitrix, you've um, asked another question here. Um, Paul. There we go. Hopefully, I think it'll be good to, um, if you need to, just uh, reach out to us, support.ledger.com. Nitrix, there is no tele Telegram support. I just wanted to, uh, uh, I just wanted to mention that straight away. We don't have any Telegram, but you can reach out to us uh, either on Twitter. Normally, it's best to go to here. Yeah, I'll show you. Best normally always go to support.ledger.com. Um, and you should be able to go onto the bottom right hand side to be able to uh, raise a ticket with us. There's a huge amount of tickets right now, but um, also I'm on Discord. I know I've got a couple of colleagues on Discord, so you can always do that too. Just be sure, uh, careful out there. We're not going to 
ask you to give you give us uh, your recovery phrase. I think that's the really big one. Um, in particular, Nitrix, yeah, try to get a hold of us on support.ledger.com. You've got this uh, button right here. We might want to uh, uh, try and troubleshoot with you there. Um, I, you can see you asked a question about having a custom pick as your home screen. You definitely can. Um, so definitely, definitely look out to do that. I, I, I really enjoyed it. You can customize and everything like that. Um, um, Kara. What uh, what risk? What is the risk of using Ledger Live desktop app in a malicious or public PC? Is it possible to be hacked? I don't want to use this software in a PC, but you force it with firmware update. So, with that, with what you've mentioned, uh, a couple of things come to mind. Um, it is um, possible, and it's uh, the Ledger devices are built with uh, the expectation that uh, with the uh, thought that you don't have to trust the the, the, the PC that you're working with. Um, what you want, uh, what you trust is the screen, the, the ledger device's screen itself. So I think that's good to know. Second thing would be that how, uh, how what are the, the risks? If let's say I know my, this laptop here is compromised, what do I do to try and, uh, uh, what am I going to have to do to try and uh, mitigate the risks here? Or what are the risks? So what would happen is, uh, let's say I'm, interacting with, uh, let's say, Uniswap, because we had that open before. If I'm interacting with Uniswap, it might ask me to swap something, and instead of swapping my 1000 USDC, it swaps it for some weird rubbed coin there where some malicious actor has the power, for example, or just asks it, it, it pretends like it's swapping, but it sends it to a malicious hacker's address. The re the, what is important here, and what uh, how you're protected, um, in general, uh, when you use a ledger device, is that you see what happens here, you go, hey, um, it's asking, I, I know that I'm looking to swap on my ledger device, uh, on my PC, and then I go to my ledger device and it says that I'm sending a transaction or I'm not interacting with the same smart contract that it says on, um, on screen than it does on my ledger device. So my trusted screen is my ledger screen. That it should be immediate red, red flags and you're like, okay, now you know that something is wrong. You're signing a transaction that is purporting to be something else. So that's how you can kind of be protected and not compromise your assets uh, because you're able to tell that you're being lied to with the compromised uh, PC, right? Um, the, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that because you mentioned that you have to use a PC to for firmware updates, that's that's okay. Um, you wouldn't. I wouldn't expect any really. I wouldn't expect any uh, vet, vectors to be worried about at the moment with regards to doing a firmware update on a uh, compromised piece of uh, on a compromised PC necessarily. Um, now, I wanted to preface that. Why would I not be as worried? Because if you're using a genuine version of Ledger Live, it will always do that genuine check. I think I mentioned that before. So that's kind of where how that is combated. There's always that genuine check. We check the software, we check the hardware. So when someone puts a, 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 a custom firmware, for example, on the device and then they try to get, uh, get you to mess with uh, your assets, right? Um, first of all, when you reset, when you uh, update the firmware, Especially when it knows it's under attack, it might, let's say, reset the device. So then, first of all, the, the attacker has to know your PIN. If the attacker knows your PIN and has access to the device, they're going to be able to take your funds anyway. They don't want to, you know, reset your firmware and things like that. So that's that's generally going to be some uh, some other security hole that you need to fix. It's not with regards to the ledger. But yeah, you should. I think I've gotten a little bit off track here, but essentially, you should be able to do your firmware update on the on an Android. Uh, but it sounds like you might have an iOS device in particular. That might be why you're you can only do it with a PC. Um, yes, I have gotten a little off track. Um, boom, 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 boom. Um, all right, uh, no tricks. Uh, Jonathan, do you know when the Ledger Black cases are going to be available again? Ah, uh, no, I, I don't, unfortunately. I will mention that as being, uh, I, I know a lot of uh, customers have uh, asked for that in particular, so 
Um, maybe we'll try to have our uh, social team uh, maybe put out a tweet or something or something like that. Uh, I'm sure they'll be uh, itching to tell you guys when they're available next. Future modules, so the current ledger can't support at all for color display via software updates. No, it's a it's a hardware it's a hardware um, black and white display. Um, I'm having issues every time I want to add card. I know it freezes out. DJ Minico with that question. Yeah, try to get a hold of us. We might want to um, we might want to get a hold of you. Try and troubleshoot with you um, in more in depth um, in particular. All right, there's a couple of answers. I uh, got you guys chatting, and I think here is anything written in Ledger device about my transactions, or Ledger device only keeps private key that access my transactions on the chain. That's pretty much it, except for the the bit about the private key because it's the recovery phrase that's on the device, and the recovery phrase derives a private key. But that's just me nitpicking. But Kara, that's pretty much exactly right. Your Ledger device only holds your recovery phrase. It's your recovery phrase that derives your private key and the public key that you can use to sign transactions on chain. That's exactly right. Nothing um, on you, you can't you know, see your balance on your ledger device. You can't see um, anything like that. But yes, that's pretty much, we hit the nail on the head there. Um, all right. I think that just about wraps it up for me. I don't know if you guys had any more questions. Again, um, if you guys want to get a hold of us, uh, please um, support.lojo.com. Uh, we are dealing with a lot of requests, but we'll try to get a hold of you. Otherwise, jump on Discord, jump on Twitter. Um, those are normally the ones that I'm on. Uh, you can, you can uh, try and ask us there. But again, there's a lot of scammers out there. We'll never ask you for your recovery phrase. Don't sign any transactions that you're not familiar with. Please, please be careful out there because I know that it can be tough. Uh, it can be really, really intense. There you go, all these bots um, coming at you and things like that. So um, please stay safe uh, in this holiday period. Um, and yeah, um, maybe one last question. No tricks, will there be any benefits for early stacks holders? If you were a uh, Ledger Market Pass holder, you can you would have been able to mint the ledger stacks redemption with uh, an nft um, that you would have gotten as well um, you can get those all on second uh, the secondary market you can jump on someone like rareable um, to do that love the questions coming in i might just try it i always love ranting and raving so uh, sergio asks um, how can i create accounts with the passphrase there is uh, I helped send an article with regard to that. Um, passphrase, boom. How to set up a passphrase. So support.ledger.com, you can type in search passphrase or something like that. You can look at that here. Generally, it's a bit more It's a bit more of an advanced feature. It's more to do with uh, uh, plausible deniability in, in, the case of, uh, in case of a wrench attack and things like that. So that's what I might, uh, that's generally the, um, uh, the, the purpose of using a passphrase. Um, um, in most cases, um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, get a hold of me. Um, uh, we're on, I'm on Discord, where you can get a hold of us at support.ledger.com and we'll go from there. Hopefully you guys uh, have a good week, uh, have had a good holiday season. Hopefully you guys don't get into too much trouble over the New Year's. Um, and stay safe out there, uh, stay safe in the markets out there and don't sign any weird transactions. Thanks guys.